So we are going to talk tailbone pain today, and there are a lot of reasons why one might start experiencing tailbone pain. It doesn't discriminate, it can happen to men, it can happen to women, um, younger people, older people, and we are able to support anybody who might be experiencing tailbone pain. There are lots of reasons why this could occur. It could be a trauma, like a slip and a fall or a car accident. It could be a cyclist who just has a lot of pressure on their tailbone. It could be someone who sits all day at work, um, maybe in a less perfect position on a harder chair and all of a sudden they have an onset of tailbone pain. It could be someone who's pregnant, who's recently um, gone through the journey of labor and delivery, and even somebody um, may have an onset of tailbone pain just in the postpartum period. So we're going to focus on the latter. So we're going to talk about reasons during pregnancy, labor and delivery, and then the postpartum period of why tailbone pain could occur. First, we're going to talk a little bit of anatomy. So this is essentially looking at somebody from the back side. This is the lower lumbar vertebra. This triangular bone is actually your sacrum. And this teeny little bone here is the coccyx or the tailbone. You see there's a, maybe there's a little line here and that's because that's a joint. So this is the sacral coccygeal joint and there's a little bit of mobility here. This is a complex joint because there are um, lots of ligaments that attach into and stabilize this region. Um, and because a lot of your pelvic muscles, um, in fact, most of your pelvic muscles attach into your sacrum or into your coccyx or tailbone. And so when we think about reasons of why pain could come on, um, in during pregnancy and really during labor and delivery and postpartum period is because of those hormones. So hormones are really circulating through the entire body and that of those hormones particularly affect the laxity and looseness of the joint um, via the ligaments. And so those hormones play a big role in the, the mobility and um, stability of this joint. And we know that even four months with cessation of breastfeeding, that we can still have those hormones circulating in our body. So that's a long time from onset of pregnancy all the way to four months of cessation of breastfeeding um, before we have those hormones sort of um, out of our system. So that's a big one is the hormonal impact on the tailbone. The other thing we could talk about is that um, positioning during labor and delivery can also affect the tailbone. So if someone, let's say, um, was on their back um, and, and had some pressure here and in different positions with the pelvis, can affect that joint. Here's the ball and socket joint of our hip. The angle of the hips, whether turned too far out or maybe in, can also cause a little bit of pressure and stress strain uh, on this joint. Um, not only positioning during labor and delivery can affect this, but just the mechanics of moving baby down and out. There has to be some movement and some motion here. The other thing is that the pelvic floor goes under an immense amount of, of stretch, and that's going to also obviously pull on the bones where it attaches to. And so that joint can actually get sprained just like it could uh, any other joint in your body with an injury. So labor and delivery positioning and just the mechanics of what has to happen could cause some tailbone pain. The other thing that I think is pretty important is understanding that all these little holes right here are where the nerves from our spinal cord come out and right here on this side too, kind of come out and through the pelvis. So again, um, if you're pregnant and there's a lot of extra pressure or tension on those nerves, irritated nerves can refer pain to the tailbone. Labor and delivery, again, if the, if the pelvic floor tissue is going under immense stretch, so is the neural tissue. And so again, that could cause referral to tailbone. So I think that um, 
the mechanics of that and, and understanding the neuromuscular complexities of the pelvic floor is pretty important and how that can be affected. The other thing that we see a lot for the moms we support in our clinic is maybe um, when they're pregnant or in the postpartum period, we actually see pelvic floor muscles that are actually working too hard. So they're really working, they're overgripped, they're tight. And you can imagine that if someone is pulling and tensioning these muscles constantly, that that's also going to affect that joint. So working those muscles too hard is a big issue we see um, sometimes in pregnancy and even postpartum period. That kind of goes along too with the position in which we hold our pelvis and use our pelvis throughout the day. So we see a lot of compensations during pregnancy and especially in the postpartum period of tucking the butt under. And so we're over gripping pelvic floor. We have a lot of gripping and tension in our glutes. Um, not only is that going to make those muscles weak, but that's going to put a lot of pressure here. So how you're standing, sitting, holding baby, bending, lifting, all those things can impact this based on how you're using and holding your body. So lots of reasons why one might start experiencing tailbone pain. And I think it's important in, um, in, for someone who is having pain to see a physical therapist, specifically a pelvic physical therapist, who can really do a thorough evaluation and assessment and determining determine all the factors that come into play for why you might be experiencing tailbone pain. So I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.